No. no are you deal. guys ready? I'll work with you. Sorry. Here we go. Crystal City. <laughs> Crystal City. Oh, these guys are a mess behind the scenes today. Uh, Crystal City. They have wine tastings, bike rides, art shows to beer gardens, street hockey to fashion shows, and so much more. There's always something going on at Crystal City. Check out their website, crystalcity.org, for details. All right, Paul. And Valentine's Day is right around the corner. Be sure to check out our friends at Mervis Diamond Importers. If you're thinking about an engagement ring or a wedding ring, all sorts of jewelry, diamond studs, check them out at Mervis Diamond. Oh, all right. Here we go. I have my burrito, and I'm feeling good. (laughs) Here we go. What's the phrase that you hear every day? Hey, phrase. What's the phrase that you hear every day? Hey, phrase. What's the phrase that you hear every day? Hey, phrase. What's the phrase that you hear? Tune in, yeah, you gotta tune in. Sarah Frazier on the mic, and she about to begin. The co host with the most Paul Wharton looking fleek. Take it from where you should be listening. Live from the nation's camp, pop culture at its best. No need to second guess, separated from the rest. Entertaining nonetheless. I love it. You know the words. I finally learned the words. I finally know the words. I know, it's crazy. Shout out to Teddy Beats. Teddy Beats. Are you and Teddy cool? We are so cool. Oh, good. Okay, My good. new best friend. Okay. <laughs> My new best friend. Yeah, we're great. Oh, you guys, welcome to the Hey Rage Podcast with Paul Wharton. It's Wednesday. That means a brand new show for your yes. ear holes. We always love hooking you up, and you guys are amazing. Thank you for subscribing, listening, and sharing this podcast, and please keep it up. We're very grateful. I couldn't wait to get to you today, girl. Really? I was making my way. I'll be working my way back to you, babe. You know that? <laughs> yes, I do. Oh, I was working With my way back to you. In love inside. Yeah. <laughs> so, we never know the next slide. Um, yes. Oh, my God. We had a crazy weekend. Well, you had yeah. a crazy weekend. I cannot wait to talk about your life. Wow. Okay. Well, you know, I'll be living. I guess you've been living. Oh, my God. <laughs> with the man who, where did he come from? I don't, a, a bar. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, Paul has the most insane. He sent me text messages. You were texting me over the weekend with this story. And I thought, really, this was like a, this amazing connection and hookup that you had, but then it would be like done. But there is some major updates. Like yeah, it's still I going guess on. Yeah, right? Yes. Well, I mean, it's only like day four. What are you saying? That's like a milestone for me in relationships. <laughs> this is four like- days, Paul. I'm doing all right. <laughs> <laughs> this is really good, Paul. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we have to talk about that. There's so many stories going on in the news. Uh, our interns, um, who you're getting to know, AJ and Leslie. Leslie does all our film stuff. AJ, ha- by the way, you kind of call her Emily. And I was just thinking about that coming in here today. Because now I say it all the time. Emily! Yes, well, she understands why. Get on the microphone. <laughs> Emily! Emily! Why, hey, do we, why do we call you Emily? Why are we okay, so-, so it stems from the movie The Devil Wars Prada. Yes. Got it. And you know how her name is, actually her name is Andrea. And so Paul, you know, just him being himself, he's like, Andrea. And the old, this is going to be a long drawn out story, but Devil Worth Prada, her first, her old uh, assistant was named Emily. Mm-hmm. Got it. And so whenever they're like, Emily, and her name is Andrea, so she doesn't respond. And she's like, well, she's talking to you. <laughs> but she doesn't take the time to learn the new name. Right. So uh, yeah, I'm just like this little intern that Paul, you know. So that's our line. I oh. say, Emily, and then I'll say, he's talking to you. <laughs> Nobody knows what the hell we're talking about. <laughs> He's talking to you. Oh, my God. Okay, well, that's why if you hear us call AJ, Emily. Yes. That's exactly what we mean. Yeah, because she's double dipping. She's over here at the podcast, and she's also at Paul Wharton Style, so we're spending a lot of time together. I'm a jack of all trades. Yeah. You really, really are. You've been doing such a great job for us, and you're back. Everybody keeps wanting, like, I keep getting messages. They're like, oh, AJ's back. I'm like, yes. She was back our in intern town. before this summer when we had Irene and AJ, mm-hmm. and then she got this radio offer that turned out to be a fucking nightmare where they never, like, actually fired the woman that AJ was supposed to replace, and right. I knew it was going to go south. Like, I really encouraged yeah, her to take this. Yeah, you've been there before, this. right? Yeah. Yes, yeah. it's the worst business. And I knew it was going to go south when you posted how excited you were you were starting a new job. And then right. they messaged you and said, could you take that down? Because we really haven't told anyone that you're coming. Right. And it was the next was day like, that I was oh, supposed to start. No. Right. Has that ever happened to you all in a relationship where you posted like in a relationship status or you posted something up and they're like, oh, actually, you know what? I was unaware we <laughs> were in a relationship. I week on that one. I haven't gotten out of my last relationship. <laughs> so it's kind of a problem that you tagged me. Um, no, I haven't had, 
happen in a relationship, but in a work environment. In a work environment. But I've been in that Don't work blame me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've completely been. I've, I've had right. I, years ago when I first started in DC in the radio market, I worked for a classic rock show, and they had told me, "Oh, you are going to be the female co-host with these two guys." I'm like, "Awesome! Oh my god!" In my first like real radio job, and then they call me and they were like, "Actually, you know what? You don't have to come in for the next couple of days. We're, we're just uh, we're rearranging the station." Mm. And I was like, uh, "Okay." Anyway, come to find out, they were auditioning another woman. And they never uh, were like honest with me, but then ooh. they ended up hiring me. Yeah, welcome to the business. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, yeah, it's shady. Very. Yes, very. So you're back now, and back we're thrilled here. to have you. Yes, love to be here. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> it's true, I do. Well, I, I never something? wanted to leave. And she's getting used to the good life because yesterday we went out to lunch, and I said to the girls, I said, listen, do y'all want to go? We, You know, my book launched yesterday, and thank you for everybody that bought it's the book. It sold out, basically. The book sold out on Amazon. We're going to talk about brag planning because I'm not claiming to be a brag planner because <laughs> I hate. Wait, you can't say it though because you had a moment this week. I genuinely did not think. I thought if you brought it up, you were going to say that you did not want to be associated with that word. I don't. Oh, okay. Okay. So we're going to like, today we're going to like talk about it, bury we're it. We're going to talk gonna, about it. We're going to bury it. it. Okay, okay. We're not going to call me that anymore. But some people could consider this a brag plane because I got one more in me okay. and then I'm done. Okay. okay? Right. But. Yesterday was the first day my book was out, and like it sold out on Barnes and Noble. No, no, not Barnes and Noble. On Amazon and on Target.com. So I'm like happy, but at the same time I'm a little pissed. Like, well, you underestimated the little guy. You right, know? right. Like, where are all the books? Right. You know, they're like, oh, this is great. This is wonderful. I'm like, no, it's not. People want books. They need to have their books. Give them what they want. <laughs> Give the people what they want. You better be up on that email, emailing everybody and their mother. <laughs> you know what <laughs> I'm saying? Letting them know. Oh, I was letting them know. So anyway, that's the last brag plane, and then we'll address the issue later in the okay, show. Okay, got it, Thank got you. it, got it. Um, so we have to talk about brag planning. We have to talk about this relationship that, that Paul had over the weekend that's just been wild. Ann Curry was on CBS this morning talking about Matt Lauer. Ooh. The sound clip is so jousy. You're going to love that. And then can we please talk about these fucking wacko parents in California that had like 20 kids kids from ages like 4 to 29 Two and to shackled 29. them to the oh. bed. Okay, this is so crazy. And can I just say with this story, have you been reading this? Yeah. They're so crazy. You know, you can obviously never accuse someone of being guilty before they're proven guilty, but I just looked at that guy's haircut and I'm like, Ooh. I could have told you. I could have. Like, did your neighbor, did the fucking neighbors not look at this guy and go, all right, this dude is clearly like a child molester creep. We're calling the police. Like, what? Yes. But have he you ever seen himself as a principal of his own like house? Exactly. So there definitely needs to be some reform in terms of homeschooling. That's definitely an issue. Ugh. But have y'all ever seen those houses in the neighborhood where like it's completely the house is yes. falling in on itself? Yes. You have to go through like the back door, the front door is all grown over. And sheets are over the windows. Sheets like are over sheets the window. Are garbage Somebody bags. needs to knock. I no, agree. really. Should there be? Well, I don't know. Is that like too much government? But essentially, mm -mm. like <laughs> neighborhood watch. Sorry, knock, 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 knock. We got to look in you your got basement. Why you these trash bags right. over your windows? What's going on? <laughs> what is I, going on? I want to see your basement. We went down to the census office. You did what? You got too much time on your hands. Yeah, we went down to the census <laughs> office and realized you had four kids. We ain't seen them kids playing since Heckler's How could that be? You're right. Ages 2 to 29 in California. Also, this creepy video came out of the couple. They renewed their vows with um, Elvis a couple of years ago. Look at this Ooh. couple. I'm sorry. I hate to judge people. I rarely judge people by the way they look, Ooh. but these to, don't they, I'm sorry. They look so oh my guilty. Gosh. The Southern California couple remains in custody today on suspicion of torture and child endangerment after 12 of their children allegedly were found captive in their home and shackled to beds. David Turpin, who is 57 year old, 57 years old, and Luis Turpin were each being held on nine million dollars bond. Awesome. Hopefully they cannot make that. Authorities said the investigation began after a 17 year, year old girl escaped from their home in Paris, California. <sighs> And uh, called 911 to report that her 12 brothers and sisters were being held by the parents. Oh. The sheriff's office said investigators initially believed the slightly emaciated girl was 10 years old when they first saw her. Oh. How scary is that? That is so scary, but I'm just going to say this, and it's not politically correct, but only white people do stuff like this. Really? <laughs> 
Really, I'm telling you the truth. A black mama is like, as soon, as soon as your ass turns 18, you getting up out of my house. <laughs> no, I mean like. <laughs> oh, they're not keeping someone no, shackled to the bed at 29? No, 29? shackle nothing. You got to get yourself a job and get out in these streets. Okay. Um, The LA Times citing public records reported that Turbin's home address was listed as the location of the Sandcastle Day School, a public K-12 through institution that opened in 2011. I mean, I certainly hope, like you're saying, I mean, there's somebody that has a lot to answer for because was anybody mm-hmm. inspecting this school? I mean, yeah, I he was so. listed as the principal. But wait, it said it was a public school, not a private school? Yes. a Well... Yes, a wow. public K through 12 institution. And in 2016, 2017 school year, it had an enrollment of six with one student in each of the fifth, sixth, eighth, ninth, 10th, and 12th grades. Wow. But my question is like, no, obviously nobody. I mean, maybe they were checking up with them online because the kids had to submit yeah. certain tests or whatever, but no one was doing a site check. But if Isn't it's a public school, up? they were getting funding from the state. So that's the thing. That's why it says public versus private. So, so that's even to know crazier, right? How much money he was getting from the state to run that school? Good question. They'd filed for bankruptcy. The Turpins did in 2011, stating that they owed between 100 and 500 thousand dollars. Their bankruptcy lawyer told the New York Times he never met the children, but the couple spoke about them highly. Well, I bet they're tied to the bed and they're basically oh, just slaves for these two. My God, how horrible, Sarah! Uh, it, this story it just blows my mind because you know what? Every time I hear this or I see somebody escape, you know that like remember the girls in Cleveland, mm-hmm, yeah. um, that you know had been held captive for like twenty something years. I always wonder how many more people are out there. Like you're saying, in these homes with the damn trash bags over the yeah. windows, living in someone's fucking basement, and they were parents think they were kidnapped back in eighty four. You well, know I'm what I mean? I'm going to tell you something. This story makes me want to call my mother and apologize for something because it burns my ass when my mother gets on me about not calling her when I get home. It just really makes me mad. I'm just like, I'm so grown. Why do you do this? But this story makes me think, you know what? Everybody needs somebody to check up on them. Did you make it? You know, if these people have somebody checking up on them, which they didn't, you know, they would never have been in that position. So thanks mom. Elizabeth Flores is an aunt. She says for years she begged to see her nieces and nephews. Even Skype would do, but her sister and brother-in-law uh, kept such a secret life that they wouldn't let her in. Again, when that happens for 20 years and it was before the kids even were there, you don't think it's abnormal? That's what Good Morning American asked her. Great question, GMA. So where are the kids now? They're all in protective social okay. foster care. They're all in protective custody. I hope they keep custodies. them together as much as possible. Oh, my God. If it had been like two years ago uh, that she cut us off, then um, we might think, wow, something's not right. But this has been going on before they even had kids, which is what this aunt says, which is why she didn't report them, because they were very secretive, supposedly, before they had kids. Mm. You buy that? I mean, they found each other. There's somebody for everybody. Oh, God. Look at their wedding photo in Vegas. I can't even. I think this... Ooh. This may be a news story going on. Yeah, well, it just is like a creepy picture of them in Vegas with the... Oh, they're not... Oh, Ooh. that haircut. He's the worst bowl haircut mm. you've ever seen in your life. Straight out of the 70s, some awful cult leader. Well, he certainly wasn't using that money on grooming products that got him into... <laughs> <laughs> you know, got him into trouble with the IRS. Hey, did you ever call your neighbors on anything suspicious? Though I was always calling people. Isn't that awful? You were? Yeah, absolutely. What do you mean? You were that neighbor? Always, always. I always felt like, um, you know, because I think you get programmed now. You see something, say something. So it's always like, oh, you know, um, it really looked like somebody was walking into that home that didn't belong there. I don't know. You should just check up on it. Oh, my God, yeah. Someone's having a bonfire in their backyard that looks out of control, calling the fire department. <laughs> that was you? Yes. Oh, God. <laughs> But did you grow out of that? No. Now I still. <laughs> You're the one. I, heard, I heard a scream in my apartment building last week, and I honestly said to Dan, I was like, I think we should call 911. He's like, why? He's like, I think the person, it was like a kid or something. I was like, no, I can't be sure. Let's call 911. Oh, my God. I know. You are wasting but resources. But isn't that what they're there for? But just off of a scream? Maybe Hell call yeah. downstairs at the front desk. They could have been there. There might be 15 others in there. Oh, my God. <laughs> You, you know what? Know. With a friend like you, I'll never get kidnapped. Please. Right? Because oh, if I don't show up for this, but actually, you know, when an hour has to pass, because you know I'm never on time. But I'm working on that. <laughs> I'm working on that. You are? When can we expect Well, y'all that? should tell me the wrong time. You want to start at 12, you well, got to tell me 11 15. We should we just start <laughs> But on don't time? let me show up before you. I'll be mad as hell. <laughs> you got me standing out here in the cold. You know I don't got no keys. Oh, my God. You <laughs> cracked me up. <laughs> 
I was going to tell you, my mom and I do have this one policy where she gives me a 30-minute window to call her back, kind of like what your mom does. Okay. And then if she doesn't, she has a chain of people that she calls, like Dan, my friend Claudine, like Tia, Fox 5. Okay, so this is normal then. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, my mom has that same two thing, too. I mean, there's no way. I'm like, if my ass was kidnapped, there'd be uh, there'd be a squad in an hour. When does your mom ask you to call her? Because you don't see her very often. So when you're down here, if you're going from what place to what place, does she say, call me? Well, now she doesn't agree as much because I have Dan. So Dan and I check in all the time. So my mom will just call Dan if she can't get a hold of me. But um, she, we talk almost every day. Mm-hmm. So if I don't call her back or text her at some point in the day, she's calling multiple times and then she'll call Dan. Damn. Like there's no, okay, so oh, yeah. mine is not that different. Okay. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, we're the same way. She's like, you're my child. You know, we had this big thing the other day because I was heading back. You know, I went to my mother, had a big birthday. We had karaoke. We had so much fun in Delaware. So I had a oh, meeting. Oh, yeah, that looks really nice. It was oh, on your Insta so story. so much yeah. fun. So much fun with my mom and her neighbors, who I love. So I was heading back to a meeting at my house um, on Monday. And I talked to her almost all the way home. As soon as I left, she called, the house is so quiet. I'm like, no, 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 no. The house still has a heartbeat. That's you. Turn your music up. Pour your champagne. Have some fun. No, it's not the same <laughs> since you left. No, 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 no. I think it's fine. You know, open a window. Get some fresh air in there. You know. She really wants you to, like, move in, right? Like, she would love if you just lived back there. Oh, absolutely. If I if life ever became too much for me, like you just I really don't have to her. do anything. Like, she would do everything. It would be her dream to have you back and just live there. No, no, no. Well, let me... <laughs> Let me, everything, like, I'd have to bring Priscilla with me. That's the lady that helps me in my house. No, Priscilla would have to come because my mom doesn't like to do anything in the kitchen anymore. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. But she would love to hang out with me, go to lunch every day, watch Netflix. Right. She drinks champagne all day long. She <laughs> turns her music up really loud. We dance. I mean, we have fun. Yeah, you guys look like you're But she really talked time. to me almost all the way home. I was over the Bay Bridge, and you know, which is like 30 minutes from D.C., I got off the phone to make some other calls. She called me five minutes after I was home, two minutes before my meeting started, and said, you didn't call me. And I said, well, I just talked to you almost all the way home. But you said you would call me. You're still my child. I'm like, no, mother. Uh, we can't At do this. At one point, like, yeah, I need some, oh, my God. Right. She sounds, yeah, she's, uh, but I understand. I think mom's really worried. And you don't know. Like, After look at what's this going story, on. I'm going to let her call. Uh, yes, let I'm her, let it's her crazy. Um, also, this morning, it was a big news clip. I was like, I, I don't usually watch uh, morning TV shows too much. I mean, we're on one on Fox, so I, I tune into that one, of course. Um, but, you know, I had to tune in because Ann Curry was on this morning, and she had said that she was going to spill the beans on Matt Lauer, who I'm convinced... You know, we've worked in the industry for a long mm-hmm. time. and yeah, You think he got the a hand? Tough, it's a really tough business. What are you convinced about? Surprised. So, what's that? Let's hear. What I do you mean, mean that you're not surprised? Because you had heard things, you knew things. What does that mean? That means that um, in... Um, See, now I'm down, walking down that Just road and I'm it. trying not to hurt people. And I know what it's like to be publicly humiliated. I never did anything wrong to be publicly humiliated, and, and I don't want to cause that kind of pain to somebody else. But I can say that um, I, uh, because you're asking me a very direct question, mm-hmm. um, uh, I can say that um, I would be surprised if, if uh, many uh, women did not understand that there was a climate of verbal Harassment. Give us the um, dirt. Um, that Give us the dirt. Um, I think it would be surprising if someone said that they didn't see that. Mm-hmm. So um, uh, it was pr- a verbal uh, sexual. All right, let me stick with the. the, 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 the so sorry, sorry. I just don't. I'm gonna make, she just said verbal Nora sexual hate harassment scale. was pervasive. Do they hate each other? Oh, you can tell at the time when you were there. You know, I, 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 I like again. I, I don't want to just say uh, it. Uh, boy, but um, why are you there I, then? You know, I don't want to cause more pain but no I'm, I'm you were asking me a very direct question I'm an honest person I want to tell you that it was yes period boom oh period. my god I love it so anyway wow. Ann Curry this morning on CBS I have a theory that uh, Gail King and Nora O'Donnell really don't like each other anymore but Nora did just straight cut her off what was that about <clears throat> oh they cut each other off all the time it's really they used to be all really good friends and then when Charlie Rose was in the mix they sort of hit on him and like pick on him and it was like this cute dynamic but mm-hmm. now it's very obvious they hate each other which usually happens like I mean as you know I've been a part of morning radio shows and mm-hmm. teams forever and it's really hard to keep everybody's ego okay, in check, check. You, know? okay. Yeah, you usually end up hating the people that you work with just trust me i'm so glad that hasn't happened here <laughs> that's why we only work together one day a week i know myself <laughs> and i know the future uh, well your ego's out of out of control well it, i think that no I, 
I think that here's my take on this is like when you work in a dynamic of a morning show, the mm -hmm. only way it really works is if you have people like Howard Stern and and um, Robin mm -hmm. Quivers work so well because Robin doesn't want to be a lead, like doesn't right. ever want to be a lead. Mm -hmm. But I've realized about myself over the years, and this isn't like a bad thing, but I attract strong personalities. Like mm -hmm. you're a strong personality, Sammy was. But if everybody wants to have their own show and sure. their own thing, you have to really keep it. Right. You got to keep it tight. You got to keep minimal because it's it's hard. Like everybody has their own vision. Everyone is creative and talented. And, and then when you've got one person telling you you're going to do this, it, it never works. Unless like when you have a Robin, you have like somebody who really wants to be a co-host and loves that role and doesn't want to own the stage. It's sure. awesome, Absolutely. you know, because they don't they don't have that desire. They don't want the shit to hit the fan on them. Right. It always, you know, falls on the lead. But you can tell with, with well, that's Nora really interesting and because uh, Gail. I, my uncle, you know, I have an uncle, I told you all, that's touched by the spirit. Yes. You know, the spirit David. leads him and God. Uncle David, Uncle right? David. And Uncle David will say things like, you know, you get your mouth all ready to tell him a good story. You're like, well, I'm going to tell you the most intimate detail. Well, basically, Uncle David, hold that thought, he says. And he goes into something and you never get back to your fucking point. And it's just like, but wait. Or he also David. Says, you know, you know, he's like, hold that thought. So that's what Nora was just doing to to Gail there. And he also says things like, um, well, it's not so much that, but it's and I'm like, but wait, but it is to me because I said it. Yeah. You know yes. people that say that? Yes. It really gets on my nerves. Well, you can just tell with them. And I think, you know, Gail's Gail, right? Mm -hmm. She's Oprah's best friend. Gail has access to every celebrity, every... Nora, I think, is a really, really wonderful and great, like, legit investigative reporter, reporter. Like, she can do all these interviews. But I think you have clash of... Sure. You know, I, I, Gail wins. You think so? Sure. But Hell I don't yeah. think Gail is anything without, like... Nora, because Nora to me, like Gail is the fun. But Nora's nothing without Oprah. <laughs> None of them are anything without Oprah. Well, that's true. They need Oprah. Gail's got it. She's got the touch. See, I She's like both of them, but I'm like, this is not going to last much longer. You can tell. Because I think Nora now thinks like Gail's kind of dumb. And I don't think Gail's dumb, but I don't think Gail is. I mean, I think Gail's capable, but I don't think. Gail gets deep because that's not really what Gail wants to mm -hmm. do. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? She wants to be at the Oscars on the red carpet. I don't blame well, Gail her. Gail gets to do what she wants to do. Hey, she's you know what I'm saying? Open. And this is like sheer speculation. <laughs> right. I'm just saying. Totally speculating about these people. Um. <laughs> anyway, Ann Curry was basically saying that uh, that Matt Lauer is an asshole. I think we all kind of knew that. Mm. But uh, it was a good interview. <laughs> <laughs> she's so funny. What's wrong with her? 